sleep, your headphones on. I'll be your radio. And if you turn me on, how would you ever know? She got a level up to keep her company. When I can't be with her, and she can't play with me. Hi, in this screencast I'm going to demonstrate a, uh, a pretty quick way of achieving a kind of splattered paint effect. I used uh, something like this for a couple of wallpapers and I've had several requests asking how I did it. Uh, it's really a blatant ripoff of um, something he then next did back in uh, episode, I think it was 59, uh, of our, um, you can find that on our site. Um, but I'll just go ahead and show it. It's a pretty quick one. I haven't done a screencast in a while. I figure this is a good way to, kind of a uh, nice easy way to get my toes back in the water. So um, I'm also doing this on a new laptop that I have. So um, forgive me if things seem a little glitchy. I'm still trying to get the setup right here for screencasting. I don't have the key status monitor working yet. Um, I had it working the other day and for some reason I've, I've screwed it up. So I thought it's not that important for this one. It's pretty short. Um, but trust me, I will get that back up and running soon, hopefully. So uh, here we go. We'll start off with a default Inkscape window and I'm going to use the uh, cgtextures.com site to get my uh, this is where I get the textures from that I use. Um, I've already downloaded them, but I'll show you just the site here. Um, I'm going to use, first of all, a kind of crinkled plastic or paper uh, texture as my background. And I think I found it under plastic. Could be. Let me just see here. I think it was under packaging. This is the one I think, this set here. I chose one of the one of these two. I think I chose this one on the right. Um, but anyways, um, so that's what I use as my background. Now, as, as splatter-wise, you know, for an ink type of splatter or something, paint splatter, uh, they have lots of different uh, options here. Under this list at the left, you will see splatter. Under that, again, you can choose all different types. I think I chose uh, splatter again and circular, and you get these types of patterns okay and they're just uh, JPEGs usually that you'll download okay and you'll have a choice of a variety of sizes if we chose this one for instance um, you can have different types of resolutions depending on what you need for your project so we will go back uh, out of here I've already downloaded like I say the, the textures I want and I'm just going to drag them in here uh, my background sorry is here okay and now uh, the splatter I'm going to put onto that background is here okay so the first thing I'm going to do is take this bitmap that is the splatter and I'm going to convert it to a path so I will have it selected and choose um, path trace bitmap <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll also hear a laptop is a lot more quiet than my desktop. Uh, however, I've had some problems with hum on the sounds, and uh, this little mini mouse I bought for the laptop is extremely loud uh, as far as clicking goes. So you'll probably hear a lot of that in the background too. Sorry about that. Um, so, anyways, I've got my trace bitmap here. My bitmap is selected. I'm gonna use the brightness cutoff and I'm going to up that to probably I don't know, 0.9. I'll update it. That's pretty close. Hard to tell in this little thumbnail, but that looks pretty good. I'll click OK and 
it is now <coughs> converted. I can get rid of the original bitmap if I like. So here's the bitmap we're going to use. I may also um, put some text in here. So just for added effect, you can do whatever you want. But uh, let's just put some text, say Inkscape. We will bring up the text and font dialog when that's selected. And I haven't got a lot of fonts on here yet, but uh, I'm going to use this one that I picked out. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just make it lighter so I can see it. <coughs> I am going to do something like this, and I'm going to take, so this is the text, it could be whatever color, doesn't really matter. I'm going to um, do a difference between these two. I'm going to take this, um, sorry, turn that object into a path. I'm going to select the back ink spot, hold shift, left click the text path, and then I'm going to do path difference. Okay, so now I have a hole in my ink blot here formed by the text. Okay. Now, how do I get this text? You know, we could just stick it on here and it would look okay, uh, but not really realistic. So what I'd like to do is use a mask to kind of give this ink spot kind of same texture as this paper. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take this bitmap and duplicate it. Okay, control D to duplicate it. And really the way there's a couple of ways you can do it. I like to turn this into um, kind of grayscale or monochrome version. Now you can do that right in Inkscape by selecting that bitmap, saying effects, raster, modulate. You make sure the saturation is zero. Brightness, I don't know, we'll try something else. Let's try 80. And we'll click apply. And you see you get kind of a, a gray version of it. Um, that's really not the, I don't like that method as much. There's not much control there. Um, so what I do is I like to open this in um, something like the GIMP. And I'm going to do that quickly here uh, and create show you how I create this texture. You may not see. Let me see if I can shrink this down a little bit. So what I normally do when I convert anything, and this goes for photos as kind of a dual tutorial I guess, is uh, to convert to black and white with you know a fair bit of control. I use in GIMP the colors menu, components, and the channel mixer. And you know Photoshop has a channel mixer. It's very similar. Uh, what you do to convert to monochrome is click this little box that says monochrome and then you can adjust these sliders. The idea being um, you can use any you know value for these sliders but you want the total of these three numbers to be about 100. It doesn't matter if you're exact but uh, if you go way off of 100 uh, the results won't be as realistic. Especially if you're using a photo. With the texture it's fairly simple but uh, you can do this to good, good conversions of uh, color uh, photographic images into black and white and get very good control. So you might want to try that on your, you know, your regular photos too. Just a handy tip. Um, here, what I'm going to do is I'll I'll bring that back down to zero or close to it. I'll try the green, see how that looks. Eh, kind of dark, not so bad. If I bring this up to 100, it's very dark. So what I'm going to do is actually take the, you know, we'll take the green up to 80 probably leave the red down. We'll just bring the green up to somewhere close to 100. Something like this. Okay, I like that a little bit better than what we had just doing it in Inkscape. So we will save that. I had one done one before, so we'll call this BW2, black and white 2. Save it. Okay. Like I said, you don't have to use the GIMP to do that. You can use whatever you want. So we'll get rid of this duplicate we made. And I'm going to bring in the uh, 
let's see that one there that, that we just made. So there it is here. Okay. I'm going to select the first one, hold hold shift to select the second one, and bring up my align and distribute dialog box. I want to align the tops of these, make sure they're both in line. Okay. Next, I need to place my I'll bring this ink blot up to the top and I just want to place it on the black and white version exactly how I want it to be in the final product. So let's say we like that, everything looks good. Then what I do is I am um, I do two things here. One is a little trick. And what we're going to do is mask this and then bring that mask that masked object over onto our original paper image. Um, but if you don't get them lined up correctly, the wrinkles and crinkles and stuff in the texture aren't going to look right. They won't match up. Um, so a quick and dirty way of kind of keeping things in line here later on and making it easy is I'm going to create a little circle. It doesn't matter what size. And I'm going to um, align the circle with the left hand side of this black and white image. Okay. So we will do um, this, bring up the align and distribute dialog box, and align the left hand ends of them. Okay. Now, if this is in final position, I'm going to send it behind that. I'm going to window both of them, so both the ink blot and this black and white paper texture are selected, and I'm going to choose object, mask, set. Okay, so there's our masked object. You can see the texture in it there, hopefully. Um, now, I'll hold shift and select the circle too, and I'm going to group them. Control G to group them. And now I can align this onto this image because I know the left hand side of this circle has to be in line with this paper because I haven't changed the size of this through the whole process. So, um, once this is selected, uh, once that's selected, I hold shift, select them both align the left hand sides. Okay. Now you can take this, you can ungroup it. You can delete that circle if you want. And we have our paper texture. Now, depending on how gray or how dark or light that you know image is that we use to do the masking, uh, you, this may be too light for what you're trying to achieve. Okay, but everything's in line. See this crease kind of goes along with the crease in here. So what I normally do is I just uh, select that ink blot and hit Control D to duplicate it. Then it comes in a little better um, for what I want. You can do that as much as you want. Okay. So there, you get a nice ink kind of spatter or splatter um, with the same you know textures that are underneath it. Okay, to match up nicely. So if you wanted to create a kind of uh, creased paper look or crinkled paper look. You can do that on concrete textures. I've done it on um, stucco, things like that for, for computer wallpaper. It actually looks kind of neat. Um, but you know, the colors, and some colors won't go well. Obviously if you take this, you could change the colors to whatever you want now. If This, this is still just a, a path, so if I wanted to change it to yellow, I could. And that's not very good. Um, blue, hmm, still too light. Now, the texture is still there, but it's too saturated to it's really look good. So um, what I find it, you know, works well, things like a fairly dark background, um, this crinkled paper, pick something a lot darker maybe. Uh, we could do that here probably by, um, and maybe we'll make this ink spot, you know, green. We'll select the bitmap and maybe there's something in here uh, under the raster menu. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. We could do levels on it. Probably, I don't know if there's just a simple darken. Um, let's see if we can just do levels. See what the live preview looks like. Eee, we're not going to use that. Let's try. Ah, again, we could probably use the modulate on that original image. And let's just lower the brightness and see what it looks like. Yeah. So you can darken the image that way if you wanted to. Um, I don't like it as much, but uh, you can play with the image as well. 
uh, both the color of the ink splatter and the image behind. You can get all kinds of neat effects. Anyways, I'll stop wasting your time um, with my fiddling. And uh, that's it. Really quick, uh, quick and dirty way of getting a nice kind of splatter effect. I hope you got some use out of it. And thanks very much for watching.